so moving on with the next video we have this pollution and conservation so we will start with pollution first so pollution is uh, whenever in any natural uh, resource of water air and soil uh, whenever we have contaminants or that which causes uh, degrades the normal quality a good quality of the air or water when the contaminants are much high in uh, number or high in amount the levels of contaminants when they are much higher that it causes harmful effects to us then we can call that it has been polluted or air pollution or water pollution has occurred so the first thing is uh, the pollution is the contaminants when the, whenever there is a contaminant present in the natural environment that can cause some adverse damages it can be very much harmful to our health to the uh, flora harmful to the flora and the fauna that is plants and animals then we can call it pollution so there are various types of pollutions like we already know and uh, based on whatever we have studied in our environmental science classes i think it will be easier for you all so air pollution let us start with that so whatever air that we are living in we are breathing the air if if it is becoming polluted or harmful which is which already it has become so that that contaminate uh, contaminated air will be a very serious health hazard for us so first uh, moving on with the types of air pollution so air pollution can be both indoor and outdoor so do not think that if you are sitting at home then you are not uh, getting uh, exposed to the polluted air then also you are getting exposed to the polluted air so indoor air pollution is also there and outdoor is definitely there so indoor air pollution means in the enclosed spaces of our schools colleges office or homes even whenever there is this um, there will be some sort of combustion of fuels in our kitchen then there will be some uh, smoking coming from the cigarettes use of cigarettes and also there will be certain uh, in the office or in the workplace there will be chimneys which will be causing air pollution so things like that will be there and therefore these will cause the air pollution indoor air pollution mainly the cigarette smoke fuel combustion and poor ventilation will give rise to the indoor air problems and also uh, pet from the pet hair and their fur can be causing some uh, people they are allergic to these things and therefore it can cause air pollution from there dust is also a very important reason why air, indoor air becomes polluted moving on with the outdoor air pollution that is very commonly known what automobile exhaust so automobile exhaust and the industrial uh, fossil fuels whenever there are chimneys burning out the gases these are causing air pollution to a much higher extent and of course there will be some where wastes are burning we can see people are burning us a few things together that combustion air that air is also very much harmful for us and then then, then we have the chemical fertilizers like people spray it on the plants and those sprays can also be very harmful pollutants so all these will be causing adverse health effects in at the at the time of birth also in early life as well as in adulthood mainly uh, referring to the respiratory diseases that are associated with these things the asthma the uh, airway irritation and all that these things will come into place whenever we are exposed to such kind of polluted air so how we can solve it so air pollution can be solved by increasing the number of trees by afforestation by planting trees so that forest area is increased and the amount of oxygen which is released from those trees is also increased and therefore there will be some kind of a purity check of this air and also we can be careful whether the smoke from our kitchen or the furnaces are going out and with, without any proper uh, uh, filter and also the engines the 
diesel engines and st not st uh, the e electric engines are less polluted like as we have now become uh, becoming familiar with evs the electric vehicles and less and less uh, petrol and diesel engines will be used so the number of uh, the amount of air pollution coming from automobile exhaust will automatically reduce and next comes the few very common phenomena uh, very important phenomena and we have all read about it are acid rain greenhouse gases and photochemical smog so let's start with acid rain so in acid rain like the term usually uh, denotes what it is that when acids form in the fall of rain like the sulfuric acids and the nitrogen acids they start falling in the form of either in the form of snow or in the form of rain and that causes acid rain so how it is usually being formed so like we all know that the evaporation can cause the uh, water to evaporate from the water bodies like the rivers the ponds the lakes and this evaporation uh, evaporated water gets mixed with the uh, oxides of nitrogen and sulfur which are being emitted by the industries they get mixed together and whenever they are forming these pollutants are mixing with water o2 and other chemicals therefore different uh, from different sources from houses from automobile exhaust from industrial exhaust all these oxides of sulfur and nitrogen they are coming in contact with the uh, evaporated water so now they will form either wet or dry um, oxides or sulfuric acid or nitric acid and either they will come down to uh, to us in the form of snow or rain or they will be dry deposited as dust particles and gases so anything is a pollutant here so therefore whenever the snow will be deposited in the snow clad peaks then it will come down after snow melt it will come down into the river or it will be in the surface you know, from the rain the acid rain it will adversely affect the soil health it will cause the crops to die the surface will uh, the plants will die because the surface will have a high acidic content and all these water when it is running when it is coming as a runoff to the rivers then it will harm the aquatic life as well so therefore this is known as acid rain when the sulfuric as oxides and nitric oxides they mix with water and they form sulfuric acid and nitric acid and it comes down as rain or dust or snow and it affects the health here so usually drinking water has a neutral ph around 7 but this acid rain has a ph around 4 to 5 which means it is definitely acidic in nature now coming to the greenhouse effect so there are few gases which are known as greenhouse gases because of the effect that they show over here in terms of global warming so the methane most important are the methane carbon dioxide cfc chlorofluorocarbon carbon monoxide co some to some extent sulfur dioxide nitrous oxide and ozone all these gases are together known as greenhouse gases First, the sun's rays are coming towards the earth and directly hitting the earth's surface and some half of it are absorbed by the clouds and half is reflected back and lost in the atmosphere. But most of the heat is absorbed by the earth, by the land, by the oceans and everything. So this heat will be dissipated back into the atmosphere, it will be released back towards space. Some portion is released successfully, but some of it will be blocked by the greenhouse gases forming a layer over here just above the earth's surface. So these gases will block the radiated or uh, the reflected heat and therefore that all the heat will be captured within this part of the earth's surface and that will be a great cause for rise in temperature and like what we are experiencing now we will have a global warming effect so this is the reason why these gases are very very dangerous to us and these cfcs are uh, carbon monoxide ironically they are released by the refrigerators the air conditioners and things like that so therefore it is also coming uh, becoming uh, 
negative thing for us use of excessive air conditioners and refrigerators will be detrimental to us and therefore will cause the greenhouse effect again in turn rising the temperature and giving rise to global warming next and very dangerous is the photochemical smog that is happening so sometimes we also see in very high temperatures in kolkata also there there is a very uh, dense thick fog like thing or uh, covering the roads early in the morning and that is actually not fog that is actually smog because when the exhaust from the automobiles like the nitrogen oxides and the volatile organic compounds the vocs they get released they combine with the sunlight and the water vapor and everything they form the pans peroxy peroxyacetyl nitrates and they also form the hydrocarbons and they all give rise to photochemical smog which is a brown colored fog like deposition on the surface of the earth and it uh, causes um, it causes the visib visibility quite low and therefore it affects the uh, regular life and it is a very harmful so whenever we are uh, breathing into that kind of air it is also very harmful for our health so this is known as photochemical smog photo because in presence of sunlight it is happening and chemical because these chemical components are being involved and therefore giving rise to the photochemical smog So, like I was saying, the nitrogen oxide, the hydrocarbons and the tropospheric ozone, they react in the presence of sunlight to produce pans, peroxyacetyl nitrates and therefore this dispersal is reduced and concentrated greatest when there is a temperature inversion. So, they interact when under sunny conditions when there is a temperature inversion. That means suddenly if there is a cold temperature and then suddenly the sun rays start striking, then the sudden temperature inversion will give rise to this kind of chemical reaction and therefore it will give rise to production of pans and hence photochemical smog. So moving on towards water pollution. So water pollution like air pollution this is also a very uh, hazardous thing. So water pollution means the any kind of contamination of the water. It might be physical, it might be chemical or it might be changing the biological properties of the water as well. So this is mainly the source is mainly the industrial effluents, the industrial runoffs, the, uh, the agricultural runoffs containing all the chemical fertilizers and the pesticides and they all go and dump them into the natural water bodies and also the domestic wastewater like whatever sewage is getting collected from our houses all these dirty water gets uh, dumped into the rivers or uh, ponds on lakes and therefore polluting these natural water bodies so the solution is if we treat these effluents if we treat the domestic as well as the industrial effluents properly and then we uh, then we release them in the natural water bodies so for that we need to have a good sewage water treatment the sewage water treatment means that there can be a primary or secondary sewage treatment and tertiary sewage treatment so in the primary sewage treatment there is uh, this uh, removal of the organic solids from the fluids so like i was saying that in the sewage water treatment we have the primary treatment which means removing the organic solids from the fluids during sewage treatment and then we have the secondary treatment that is breakdown of the remaining organic matter whatever is present in the sewage after the primary treatment and tertiary treatment is the final processing of the sewage fluid and in which we add the chlorine uh, we give the chlorine treatment and there is phosphate removal etc so if we just have a diagram to make it easier then we can have this so raw sewage it is coming through screens and therefore there is a grid disposal and there is this primary clarifier where you can see that all the solids and the raw sludge it's getting deposited and we only the pure water is here above 
So this water is then again collected and it will go to the secondary treatment where it will be given aeration, oxygen will be added so that all the organic compounds that are there, they can be oxidized, they can be broken down and therefore in the secondary clarifier, this sludge will again uh, be deposited. So next we have this water which will be added with disinfectant like chlorine and so such that and therefore it will be discharged to the surface water or if tertiary treatment is needed like phosphate removal and all that then it will be moved on to the tertiary treatment plant so <clears throat> Next comes uh, this important terms called the BOD, COD and DO. So these are three very important terms associated with water quality treat, uh, water quality, water pollution and etc. So biological oxygen demand or BOD like we commonly call it. So this is a measure of the amount of oxygen which is consumed by the bacteria or the aerobic bacteria in order to break down the organic matter present in the water. So the greater the BOD, the greater will be the degree of pollution. So if the amount of organic matter, organic wastes present in the water is very high, so the amount of oxygen required by the bacteria to break down those organic matter will also be very high. Therefore, the higher the BOD, the higher the pollution level. Now comes the chemical oxygen demand or the COD. So measure of oxygen to require all, oxidize all the compounds in the water, both organic and inorganic, that is a measure of COD. So BOD is basically a part of COD. So BOD will always be lesser than COD. Now comes the DO or the dissolved oxygen. So oxygen that is freely available in the water that is dissolved in the water and it is available for all the aquatic life that is present in that water that is called as dissolved oxygen. So it is a very important indicator whether this water will be able to sustain aquatic life, will be able to support aquatic life. If the dissolved oxygen content is very very low then it will not be able to support any kind of of flora or fauna in that water. So after secondary wastewater treatment then aeration is easy, usually added, it, uh, oxygen is added to the water so that the dissolved oxygen level is such that it can support the aquatic life. So the oxygen supply to a river like this, when the sunlight is coming here, uh, the plants will photosynthesize and they will produce oxygen. So the oxygen will obviously be there in the water and some oxygen from the atmosphere will also dis uh, diffuse into the water. When there will be respiration, so the plants, the algae, the bacteria, the fishes, they will all utilize this oxygen and the oxygen will be consumed. So there must be a balance between these two. So the TOC that is the uh, total organic comp uh, compound or the carbon, carbon content of the water, total or organic carbon, that can be divided into non-oxidizable and oxidizable. Whatever is oxidizable, that can be considered as COD because the amount of oxygen required to oxidize the uh, carbon, total carbon content and out of this some will be non-biologically degradable and some will be biologically degradable and therefore the bacteria will be useful for the biological decomposition of those compounds. That is the BOD. So BOD will obviously be of two types, hard and soft. Hard BOD will be large molecules, it will require more amount of oxygen and it may take longer time to degrade it. And for small molecules, it will be taken up directly, the oxygen will be used up less and also it will be done quite quickly. So these are, these are the differences between BOD and COD. Here also it has been tabulated in a very easy, simplified form that BOD is the amount of oxygen consumed by bacteria while decomposing the organic matter under aerobic conditions. And COD is the amount of oxygen required for the oxidation of total organic matter in water, whether it is biologically degradable or not. And the biological oxygen, and therefore, it were well, this five days are taken for BOD, then COD will be only for a few days, like two, three days, it will be done. Permissible limit is 30 mg per liter, then this will permissible limit will be obviously lower than that of COD. 
value is lower than COD value and it is capable of oxidizing natural organic detritus and organic waste in the water. It is capable of degrading industrial sewage but does not measure the oxygen consumption of acid. So these are the differences between BOD and COD and like I was saying the dissolved oxygen levels or um, parts per, um, per molecule is very very important here. So if you can understand this green means good 7, 8, 9 DO level are good for fish and aquatic on animals. When it is coming down to 5 or 6 then it is okay for fish and aquatic animals. But when it is coming down to 3 or 4 then it is quite alarming that it is uh, poorly uh, poor and stressful for the these organisms and when it is zero to two it might kill the fishes and all so a proper do or do level or the dissolved oxygen level is very important in all these cases next is the eutrophication so this is another very important term that is uh, talked about here that is the process of increasing the nutrients in the uh, water and therefore it increases the productivity of algae and it will result in the depletion of oxygen and lead to the fish kill which is also due to the anthropogenic sources or human man-made sources. So what is exactly eutrophication? So eutrophication when the nitrates and the phosphates from the fields, agricultural fields or the soil where fertilizers are used, they just come with the runoff. They are get, getting washed off by rain and it is falling in the rivers or ponds or lakes. Then they increase the mineral content of the water so these fertilizers in the soil can help in the growth of plants so obviously in the water they will also help in the growth of plants so plant or algae will start growing rapidly and it will be like an algal bloom like everything has uh, reached its maxima so the productivity of algae will be very very high and it will slowly start covering the surface of the water like you can see here the water will start getting murky muddy and it will be start slowly covering all the surface of the water therefore now no amount of sun rays will enter into the water oxygen content of the water will go down because the algae will be using up all the dissolved oxygen no more oxygen will be there available for the fishes or the other organisms to grow now what will happen there is no sunlight there is no oxygen so the fishes will start dying so this kind of uh, phenomena in nature is known as eutrophication and it is a very good symbol that water is polluted so it will indicate that water pollution is at a high level over here and another important term which we have to remember is the leaching. So leaching is whenever all these farming areas and whatever is carried down through the soil like these nitrates and phosphates they are being carried from the soil to the water. This is known as leaching and also this can leach into the groundwater reserve we have groundwater reserve that we have for fresh water. It can leach into there, there also and can pollute the groundwater. So this kind of process where the where the nitrates and all that they are leaching into the uh, soil and they are getting carried down through the soil to a water body or polluting the groundwater level then it is called as leaching. So this uh, is also because of excessive use of chemical pesticides, chemical fertilizers etc. So the next kind of pollution is the soil pollution and the soil pollution the causes are quite simple where there is poor agricultural practices when the so waste solid waste management is really really poor wastes are being dumped into the soil and without any checkpoint there is hazardous chemicals also getting dumped in the soil and therefore the leachates from the landfills when the landfills are there and they start the pollutants start leaching into the soil they will dis uh, like dis disturb the quality of the soil the soil will no longer be able to uh, be able to be agri uh, that will not be a cultivable land anymore the agriculture will be stopped and so on 
also the dumping of waste from household industrial plants and mining all these lead to soil pollution and <clears throat> like over here there is uh, soil pollution from mining from fertilizer and pesticide application so these will obviously alter the quality of the soil the mineral content of the soil and therefore it will give rise to a very poor quality soil and thus the cultivation over here agriculture will be affected highly and normal uh, natural soil natural quality of the soil will be just uh, dis uh, polluted so <clears throat> organochlorines and organophosphates are two very uh, harmful chemicals which are used as pesticides and therefore they are disrupting the quality of the soil so how can we control it we can control it by using uh, bi biological fertilizers organic fertilizers and insecticides we can also uh, uh, properly dispose garbage so that it does not contain so that it does not uh, pollute the soil and the radioactive waste should be handled properly so all these awareness must be needed to help in soil pollution control and more and more number of plants will be planted so that afforestation can help to rebuild the soil next kind of pollution is the radioactive pollution like i was saying the radioactive pollution is the pollution caused by the radioactive substances that are uh, that are uh, polluting the environment and the surroundings so it is very harmful for the environment and therefore they must be handled properly so uh, sources are like the radiation that are coming towards the earth cosmic rays and also the like the x-ray from the x-ray machine those are coming so these kinds of radioactivity uh, sources are there which are causing this pollution so anti-radiation measures should be taken very properly and the scientific areas that they, that should be uh, given a proper protection where radioactivity is used and properly trained people will be allowed to work so these are some of the measures which we can take to prevent the radioactive pollution noise pollution <clears throat> like we all know that it is quite increasing in modern times and it is mostly by the large vehicles and the buses lorries etc and it can be sometimes very difficult to pay attention or concentrate on work because of the such noise going on around us some construction work might be there some repairing work there might be loud music or some festival going on the microphones some kind of rallies going on so these kinds of noises are increasing day by day and it is compromising the quality of our life so here you can see the vehicles the speakers loudspeakers the musics and also the public rally the political uh, things and uh, things like that they can cause noise pollution to a great extent the next thing is the light pollution which is very much uh, underrated but it is actually a very uh, rising problem that we have uh, mostly because of unnecessary lights too much lights the less amount of um, stars can be seen nowadays that uh, i think some of you might have noticed that stars are visibly less in number because of the light pollution amount of light pollution that is here so this is a very good example of how lights should be placed but how they are usually placed like this so there will be more light pollution and if it is covered from the upper side like this then it will be less light pollution so we have to follow this kind of scheme in order to uh, minimize the amount of light pollution that is there so sometimes we leave on the lights and we do not turn off the lights properly the nighttime lights should be kept off as much as possible and it will it it actually disrupts the habitat of the animals who rely on the daylight and the night cycle for their natural cycle to when to wake up when to rest this kind of circadian rhythm their biological clock gets disrupted if we properly do not maintain this light and darkness thing so it can cause stress and, and sleep disruption is also there in humans nowadays it has increased quite a lot so it it is because the use of light the screen lights that we are all always we are being exposed to that 
this kind of light pollution will be definitely harmful for us and for the star gazing the people who love stars watching astronomy these people are really on the very uh, downside of it because they are not able to see the stars at all so turning lights off at night time and installing street lamps that do not scatter light upwards but it will be only downwards like i showed in that picture this will really help to control light pollution Oil pollution is the same as uh, if it is in the water, then it's water pollution and if it's in the soil, then it will be obviously considered as a soil pollution. It is mostly because when marine habitats and marine animals are affected by some oil leakage by, from oil tankers and ships and that causes this oil pollution. Marine pollution is can be considered in, under by, uh, water pollution only. The same as this marine pollution means the harmful effects in the oceans, the marine animals which they face because of these uh, kinds of chemical runoffs from the industries, the gases and the, from the ships there is some spillage. Therefore, these will cause the marine um, aquatic animals to be very much affected by it. So, we can reduce this by preventing the runoff and uh, spills from the uh, ships and the industries and going into to the sea directly we must first treat those uh, chemical substances and then at a very um, when it is not that much harmful then only we must release them into the sea next is plastic pollution plastic pollution is a very uh, becoming a major threat to us right because plastic we all know it's non biodegradable and therefore it remains wherever we uh, throw it it remains there for years and years it does not get degraded and therefore it will be a definite problem in the upcoming years so effects is large islands of plastic waste have formed in our seas in the sea for aquatic animals it is very pathetic when such videos come out when it when plastics are wrapped around them they cannot get out from there therefore they die so these kinds of things are because of the use of plastics of the um, uh, unchecked use of plastic it is because of this we are having facing these kinds of problems we must not throw them away like that we have to find a way to recycle them properly and then reuse them and as much as possible and not uh, and replace them with biodegradable products so that plastic use is reduced Next is a few terms like bioaccumulation and biomagnification. So, bioaccumulation and biomagnification means accumulation is the increase of a contaminant level in an organism with time. So, when the fish is like at a very young age, if a contaminant is present there, it is it will increase in level as the fish grows from small to large and it will be happening inside an organism only but when the contaminant level is rising from one trophic level to another that means that these are little shrimps which contain a contaminant and they uh, these fishes are be feeding on these shrimps and these fishes have contaminant levels also higher and when this uh, seal is feeding on a lot of fishes then obviously the amount of contaminant it will consume is quite high so the blue color is the contaminant level and when these seals are eaten by this polar bears a polar bear suppose it eats two seals so um, imagine the amount of contaminant it will feed on so that is quite high so this is happening between trophic levels that mean it's uh, going along a food chain from a lower level to a higher level and it, the toxic substance is increasing in amount so this is happening in an organism this is in between trophic levels so this is bioaccumulation and biomagnification accumulation within a single organism over time and biomagnification over different trophic levels from lower to higher level and in along a food chain increase of the contaminant and there are a few terms like the biotic indicator species that is a species which is used to monitor a pollutant level in a particular environment for example lichens lichens are used to monitor sulfur dioxide concentration so if the air is polluted lichens will not grow over there and the presence of lichens itself suggests that the environment is pollutant free more or less so 
that is a very good indicator species so these kinds of biotic indicator species are there which help us determine whether the ecosystem is polluted or not and there are a few um, protocols which were held a few plans which uh, were held where to uh, decide upon certain things uh, concerning issues like the reducing emissions of greenhouse gases the kyoto protocol was held for the mediterranean to protect the mediterranean sea from the control of oil pollution and waste dumping this mediterranean action plan was formed and then montreal protocol is an agreement to reduce the emissions of ozone depleting substances like we have already known that what is ozone layer depletion because there some holes are getting formed in the ozone layer and because of which the sun rays can the ozone can directly pass into the earth and it can cause ozone pollution so ozone is very harmful for skin and it will be very harmful for the crops for the flora and fauna as well so as much as we try to de uh, stop depleting the ozone it will be very helpful for us incineration is the breakdown by burning waste burning is known as incineration and also according to the toxicity of a contaminant there are two types acute and chronic acute toxicity means it's a very single exposure or small short term toxicity and chronic means something which is causing a long term health hazard or a long term negative effect that is chronic and acute is short term or a single dose small dose and not uh, causing death very soon but after uh, but it is a very short term effect negative effect so that is all we have for this pollution uh, portion and in the next video i will start with con uh, conservation and then we will move on to mendelian genetics thank you